Hello and welcome to the ONX DSL Copper Test TDR section, provided by TMG Test Equipment in conjunction with VRV Solutions. I'm Ravi, TMG Test Equipment Specialist, and I'll be going through a brief overview of the TDR and its functionality. Let's start by going to the TDR function under the Copper submenu. Navigating the TDR main screen, it's broken down into functions Quick Range, TDR, Pan, Zoom, and Gain. When TDR is selected, Quick Range is active with a blue highlight bar around it. To switch functions, either touch the function or use the up down arrow key to move the highlight bar to the desired function. Doing so will make the function active. When the TDR is running, a small green flashing dot appears in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The TDR is stopped by pressing stop in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Quick Range allows the users to step through ranges until an event is viewable by controlling both range and gauge simultaneously. The plus sign increases the range while the minus sign decreases. You can also use the left and right arrow key keys to increase and decrease the range. Pan and zoom. The small window at the lower portion of the display is the pan and zoom feature. Zoom is for moving the closer or further away from the same point on the screen. For example, I'll move my marker to the center and decrease and increase my zoom. Pan. Let's move left or right of the same point but at the same distance. Gain controls the amplitude of the transmitted pulse. The plus sign increases the gain, while the minus sign decreases. Use only enough gain to clearly see the event. Using too much gain can distort the trace. Let's have a look what this looks like. So always begin with your lowest gain setting and slowly step up. For example, I'll increase my gain, or quick range rather, and see that there's a short on the line at about 250 meters. Now if I was to increase my gain, I'd see a lot of noise at the beginning. The best thing to do is start from the lowest gain setting and slowly step up. Here we can clearly see the fault. The more we increase, the less we see. Now let's have a look at some of the options that we can change. Now going to the options menu, you can see there's stress, UFED TDR helper, peak hold and cable type. Let's start with cable type. Now the cable type that's currently selected is 0.51. Let's say we selected 0.90 instead. And now increasing the quick range, we'll find the short that we saw earlier. Now currently it says about 250 meters. Let's go back to options and change the gauge. We can see that there's a difference in where the dip begins. To see this difference, we'll first zoom in and then press the marker button. Here you can see that the delta is being displayed. We can move this delta to the beginning of the dip. We can see that it's out by 6 meters simply because the incorrect gauge was selected. Now, one of the more difficult problems to locate is a conductor that is partially broken. This condition is referred to as a HR. The difficulty is due to the dynamic nature of the fault. In some instances, the resistance lowers and the line appears fine, only to have the resistance increase, resulting in unsatisfactory service. 
The ONX incorporates two manual features which can be used separately or in combination to help locate HR opens. These features are peak and stress modes. By selecting options, we can have a look here that stress and peak hold are highlighted. Now with peak, TDRs appear to run continuously. In reality, their operation is a series of snapshots, sending the high frequency TDR signal, waiting for the return reflection, and finally displaying the trace or reflection results. In addition, each snapshot displays its own unique trace, erasing the previous one. Peak does not erase this trace. Instead, each new trace overwrites the previous one. This allows the user to su see subtle differences which are often the location of the HR open. Let's demonstrate this through the short that we see on the screen. Now I've got peak hold on. I'll now create an open and you can see that it's held the difference between the two traces. The next thing to look at is stress. As previously discussed, HR opens are difficult because the resistance at the fault location increases and decreases. Besides monitoring the trace for changes, another technique is to inject a signal which hopefully disrupts the fault resistance, thereby revealing its location along the trace. Stress, when activated, momentarily stops the TDR and connects the ONX leakage ohmmeter for a number of seconds and instantly returns to the TDR. The leakage ohmmeter applies approximately 120 volts in dual pol polarity, attempting to disrupt the fault resistance and make its location viewable on the trace. Let's now have a look at saving results and setting a reference. For example, our short on the line, we can select reference, go to save, and type in a description or a location for the fault. Now let's open the line and load our reference. Here we can see the difference between the two traces. This can be done for different pairs or different locations. We can also hide the reference if need be. If you're on a current trace, you can also set that as your reference without having to save it. For example, I'll now short the line and you can see the difference between these two traces. Let's now have a look at the Smart Gain TDR function by pressing Mode and going down to Smart Gain TDR. Now Smart Gain drives the complexity out of running a TDR. Using Quick Range, Smart Gain automatically controls Gain, Pulse Width and Zoom features giving the user the ideal combination of settings. Smart Gain incorporates JDSU's patented time varying gain to eliminate clutter and focus gain at the trouble location. The fine tuned function at the bottom of the screen enables you to select the dominant cable gauge. Plus and minus increases or decreases the fine tuning. You can increase and decrease about half a gauge. If you want to override smart gain settings, simply use control gain as in the standard TDR mode. Now let's have a look at the in-home TDR function. In order for a TDR to be an effective in-home troubleshooting device, a new level of design criteria was needed. Resolution of 6 inches or less and no blind or dead zone were required to locate faults in interior wire. The ONX in-home TDR meets these requirements and brings a new level of sensitivity to TDR testing. TDRs are essentially impedance meters. Variations in impedance over time either show a rise or a dip in the return trace. As sensitivity increases, any change in the characteristic impedance will be displayed as a reflective event, including the test leads. It is for that reason, JDSU or Viavi suggest twisting the test leads together to maintain a constant impedance for best accuracy. The rest of the functions are as per your standard TDR.
Here are some tips and tricks with regards to the TDR. A clean open will be the tallest peak other than the launch pulse on the trace display. A dead short across the pair will be the lowest valley on the trace. Big events or reflections up close make things beyond it harder to see. The solution is to use smart gain. Measure from both ends if possible and make sure the distance, the distance to the fault match closely. Now a TDR can't see anything past an open, a short or a load coil. The TDR pulse looks at a high frequency signal, so load coils will roll off or decrease the amplitude of the pulse, and any reflections. Shorts above 100 ohms will be difficult to see or not be seen at all. Always measure to the first fault only, and clear it before continuing. Here are also some samples of TDR traces. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we update our video series on the ONX DSL as well as training on other equipment that TMG provide.